God has something big in mind for each and every one of you. Trust. It is a clue. If you destroy trust, the relationship is gone. Before betraying trust in such a way, think of the long-lasting effect. God gives us things to use. And one day, we are going to give account of it. Hallelujah. Saul was dead. The man pursuing him had died. Now David is free. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. The worst thing you can do in life is to be pursuing somebody. Even if somebody offended you. Even, so, even if somebody hurt you. Don't pursue an enemy. God said, vengeance is mine. You know, Saul himself was only being disturbed by demons. But it was the day he was going to Naioth where Samuel, the eldest man, was because David ran there first and he wanted to go and capture him. On the way, as he was pursuing, God smote him with madness. On the way. So pursuing anybody is the most dangerous thing you can do. David's enemy is dead. So David had to return to Israel. And he asked again, God, do I go back to Israel? God said, yes. Which city should I go back to? He said, go to Hebron. He returned to Hebron in Judea. All the men of Judah gathered. And they said, David, we have come to anoint you our king. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So David now became a king in Hebron. Saul had died. Abner, the son of Na, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and anointed him king and placed him on the throne of Saul in Benjamin. But David, king in Judea. In Hebron. It didn't take long. Two brothers went and beheaded Ishbosheth. And after beheading, beheading him, they brought his head to David. And David asked them, What are you holding? He said, It's the head of the son of your enemy. How did you do this? We sneaked into his bedroom when he was taking a nap and we cut off his head. We have brought his head to you so that you can rule the whole of Israel as God said. David said, how do you do this? How do you go into an innocent man's house and you cut his head? My men, fall on them. Hallelujah. And those two brothers were killed. After that, the whole elders of Israel from every tribe, they came down to David in Hebron. This time, they were begging him, please, you were never our enemy. You were the one fighting our battles until your boss, Saul, started pursuing you. Now, come and be our king. The whole Israel is asking now. You see, there is what is called... Kronos. Kronos is from the word chronicle. They, are, they have the same root. Kronos is time. We are living in Kronos in time. There is another word, Greek word, called Kairos. Time moves from here to there. But Kairos is when God breaks into time and drops from heaven to do something spectacular. Hallelujah. Amen. Kairos is the opportune time. The opportune time for David had come. And God is telling me 
Somebody is approaching his opportune time today. Amen. Your Kairos time is now. Amen. And when your Kairos time comes, do you know what happens? What you have been pursuing since, they bring it and they are begging you to have it. Amen. That was what happened to David. The nation of Israel saying, come be our king. And David was anointed king. And the first thing that came into his mind is a dwelling place. And the first place that came into his mind was Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the same as a place called Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city naturally fenced with mountains. The Jebusites lived there. That was their fortress, their strong place. And David took his men and faced the Jebusites living there in, in this fortress. And he fought and fought and kicked them out of that place. And when he kicked them out of that place, what did he do? He built the house of Cedar upon Mount Zion. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The fugitive who lived in caves, in bushes, is now having a house of Cedar built on Mount Zion of all places. The refugee who returned from Ziklag now owns a house of Cedar on Mount Zion, in this life, bad situations don't last forever. Anything which has a beginning in this life, it also has an end. But what a long journey for David. From the caves of Adolam to Keilah. From Keilah to Ziv. From Ziv to Ziklag. From Ziklag to Hebron. From Hebron to Mount Zion. Life's journey is never straightforward. It's never. There are twists and turns in life's journey. Today, you are advancing. Tomorrow, you fall back. Occasionally, things get better. At another time, things get worse. Again, the preacher said, there is time for everything under the earth. Hallelujah. I don't know which season you are in now. Is it the season of trial? Season when car was stolen? Is that the season? <laughs> yeah, that season will also pass. I met a friend in Bridge North, England. Tom Smith. Tom Smith visited Margaret William, the, man, the woman that introduced me to Supply Life. She was in Azare. Tom Smith came to Azare to visit Margaret William. And malaria hit him. He was almost dying. He told me, Thompson, one of your pastors came to visit me. And that was Robinson. <laughs> He said, he looked into his eyes. He said, sir, the sickness came to pass. In other words, this sickness came to do what? To pass. It hasn't come to stay. <laughs> to us, it's a big theology. But to Tom Smith, he sounded so funny and he said it and laughed and laughed. But let me tell you, problems of this life come to pass. They don't come to stay. They just come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Life and life journey are like bow and arrow. When the bow draws the arrow back, it has no other alternative 
but to launch it forward. So if life has drawn you back now, watch out. It is launching you forward. David lived in caves. From there, he moved to Kayla. Kayla was a city. And the people of Kayla were kind. They were good, friendly. At least until he left. But God said, look, you can't be safe here. Someday they will betray you. And then he moved to Ziv. Ziv was a desert. And life became tougher there in Ziv. It was there. He ran into his enemy twice. Or his enemy ran into him. It was from there he moved to Ziklag, a city with safety. But that city had its own problem. You see, any place you go to in life, it is good. But it has its own problem. That of Ziklag was that it's a city of compromise. Saul is not coming here to kill you. But any time I'm going to fight, you will follow me. Even if it is your mother I want to go kill, you must come with me. Very bad string attached. That is Ziklag. Ziklag was a land of losses. He lost wives. He lost children. He lost livestock. He lost his dwelling place. They were burnt. But finally, the same Ziklag turned into a place of recovery. He recovered his wives. And his men recovered theirs. Their children, their livestock recovered. Isaac was in the land of Canaan. And famine came upon the land. He wanted to run away. God said, no, don't go. Stay in this land. Endure this famine. But I will give you abundant harvest. That same year, the Bible said, he harvested hundredfold. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, we Nigerians, we like running. More especially those of you from the East. Abiola's crisis came. During Abiola, Abiola said, hey, they are going to finish us. People ran. Boko Haram is coming. You run. You are given quick notice. You run. How long will you continue running? God told Isaac, stay where you are. The famine has come, but stay. For he has promised, in the days of famine, you shall not starve. In the days of war, you shall not be consumed. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop running. That land of every bad thing became a land of good news. Good news, the first good news. David, stay. You are not obligated to go fight with me now. Stay. I won't call you again to come fight with me. Land of good news again. It was there he received the good news. My enemy is dead. The source of all your troubles, King Saul, he has died. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. God will lift you up from that cave of Adolam and place your feet upon Mount Zion. God will lift you from that cold and dark place and put you on the mountain of brightness. David's cedar house wasn't the most fantastic house in the world. But David remembered when he was only living in the cave of Adola. He remembered where he was coming from. That was when he said, See now, I live in a house of cedar. Shout hallelujah. I don't think that his background ever allowed him to dream that one day he will own a house of cedar on Mount Zion. May God grant you 
the favor of inheriting what you never dreamt of. What nobody thought, the place nobody thought you will get to in life. You will get to it in Jesus' name. David's life journey was marked with zigzag shape. But may God make yours shorter and straightforward. God, uh, David said, see now, finally, I live in a house of cedar. A man called Alan Kenyon said, look back to where you are coming from and try to be your own best fan. If you do so, you will maintain the momentum to keep on keeping on. You will maintain the momentum to keep on keeping on. It wasn't the best house in the world, that house of cedar. But do you know what our people said? A poor man's hand is his goat. If in the village, everybody owns goats. God has blessed you with only a hen. Stop seeing that as a hen. Start calling your hen a goat. <laughs> Fingers are not equal. It doesn't matter what God has blessed my brother with. I will appreciate what he has blessed me with. Yeah, it wasn't the best house. Solomon despised it and built what he liked. But you can't compare it with the caves of Adolam. You can't. In the caves of Adolam, he slept with one eye closed and one eye open. But now he is on Mount Zion. And there was Mount Zion fortification. Hallelujah. Amen. Solomon was not impressed with that house. But to David, it was heaven on earth. So where you are coming from determines the, 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 the measure of your success. As you are looking at me today, I never lived in a house with running water until I had lived more than half of my life. Never. As a primary school boy, I lived in a place called Obibo, 15 miles from Port Harcourt. I went to school in Imo River, about three or four kilometers away. I never wore shoes. We walked on the third road, above Port Harcourt Road. In those days, it is, it is not asphalt. It is this stony this stone they pour, and they use uh, bitumen and pour on it. So we ke- sun, we hit it, and you are walking on it. Under my feet was baked, and it was like under the feet of uh, a horse. It's not feeling anything. All the cracks are the heel. We are going to school. It is overnight. Fufu. Abu. Overnight. Heat it up. Heat up soup. There was no fridge there. It's the same soup. They continue boiling, boiling, boiling until it turns black. You eat it in the morning and go to school. You come back, you are eating the same thing. In the night, you are eating the same thing. We only ate rice during Christmas and Easter, (laughs) period. Then you return from school, mama has put put drums. You have to fetch water and fill the drums. I, Dede, and my sister there, we take our buckets, go into stream, a mile or two away. You carry this thing. You are not going once. You have to feel the drums. And you carry this thing. Your your neck comes like this. And that's how you carry, you go, you carry, you come, 
continue pouring. Look at my father. My father was a six-footer. Look at my height. I think, I think it was the water I was carrying. Yeah. It's heavy load. You carry firewood, you carry this, everything on the head, and you are being depressed. You are, you are shrinking. That's where I came from. That is where I came from. Remember where you came from. That's my own history. That is why I can survive in every condition. If everything I have today is taken away from me, I will still be the same Reverend Thompson. Because I know where I'm coming from. It is a very far place. Where you are coming from provokes the spirit of appreciation. That was why David said, See now, I live in a house of cedar, but the ark of God is in a tent. I must show appreciation because of where I'm coming from. I have to do something. And Nathan said, Do all that is in your heart. Looking back to where you are coming from, Creates the, creates the spirit of appreciation. It makes you see the faithfulness of God on your life. But most of you will not look at where you are coming from. You are looking at what God has not done for you. Hallelujah. I don't know how many grateful people that are here today. David said, now, now, it wasn't like this before. Now, I dwell in a house of cedar. An unknown author said, look back to where you came from and let yourself feel proud about yourself. Another author said, if you want to move forward, often look back. Otherwise, you'll forget where you came from and where you are going to. Don't look down on your achievement. Tell your neighbor, don't look down on your achievement. Others may be looking down on your achievement. They don't know where you are coming from. That's why they are looking down on your achievement. You are the only one who can tell where you are coming from. You are the only one who can say what you have been through. Our uh, people said that li lizard fell from palm tree, landed on the ground. He looked right, looked left. Nobody was clapping. He nodded his head and said, look, if nobody will praise me, I'll praise myself. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So I don't know about you. I give myself pat on the back. I'm always thankful to God. God, thank you. I never expected I'll be here. I never expected I'll become a Christian, born again. I never expected I'll be a preacher. I never expected I will have followers. I go to Yola, this professor, that professor. I go to Jalingo, this commissioner, the other commissioner, the other palm sake, everybody calling me daddy. I, 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 I'm approaching and welcome to Yola. They just feel it. Welcome to Jalingo. Cars are queued up. Police is clearing and sirens are blowing. And I say, I say, who are they doing this for? Who? I just laugh. I laugh. Some of you, some of you your heart will be like mountain. It makes me laugh because it doesn't touch me doesn't mean anything to me. We are just doing it so that people can see and attend my meeting. That, that is not my lifestyle. Hallelujah. It's not for me. In my heart, I'm just saying, God, thank you. So I don't know how many people today who came to this place with a grateful heart. 
to say God. Look at January. Look at the sickness I suffered the other month. Look at how I came very close to death. Look at where I am now. Look at all the dead people. And I'm alive. Why are you ungrateful? Shall we rise today? Shall we come with all our hearts to say, God, thank you? Can you look back and see all that you passed through? We hope this message has inspired you. Thank you for watching. To other for this message, please call 80 God bless you.